I gotta share something with you guys. Um, okay. I wrote a book last year and I am doing research for my second one. And last year the book was for doctors. I train a lot of doctors. The second book is for the public and how to pick the right doctor. Okay? A lot of what's going on is the public has an expectation and they're going into a physician and they're not getting the answer they want. Let me give you an example. I had a new patient last Monday and this patient says to me, well, I went to the surgeon and all he wanted to do was surgery. I don't want to do surgery. And I go, well, <laughs> if you don't want to do surgery, you have to go to another doctor <laughs> than a surgeon. It just doesn't, your approach doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know if it's the internet or exactly what's going on, but people are kind of trying to be their general physician and it's difficult. It really is difficult to diagnose yourself. There's a, there's a joke and a saying that doctors are the worst patients and that's because too much information can be a problem. Okay? The internet right now is just saturated with information and most of it's to, geared towards selling you a product and you, you're going to have to analyze for yourself what, do you, what it is that you want so that you can see the right person. When I was doing research for the second book, I was researching the cost associated with people going to the wrong doctor. So for instance, migraine. In the state of California, the, the average income for people going to the emergency room for migraine was $8,000. Eight, eight thousand dollars. Okay, I can see a person their entire lifetime for eight thousand dollars. That's an entire lifetime of chiropractic care. I mean, wow, eight thousand dollars, and I guarantee you, chiropractic is one of the most efficient therapies for migraines. So why that person went to the emergency room and didn't get checked out by a chiropractor, or didn't have a chiropractor already that they get checkups with that might have even prevented. The migraine from coming and never going to the emergency room. Which brings me to really the meat of this subject. The cost associated with not getting checkups is insane. So I'm pushing 37 and I live like I'm 18. Most of the day, about 10 hours a day, I'm doing extreme physical activity. I am I am really just amazed at how my abilities just to be able to, to surf and run and swim and and a lot of my son's friends and kids under 15 years old are struggling to do movement patterns and run and get into sports because of the weaknesses they have from perpetual sitting, postures, gaming, all sorts of things nowadays. So getting... I've been adjusted since I was two years old. I had, okay, maybe slacked a little bit in college, you know, uh, money was tight as a student and living on $800 a month was a challenge. So getting uh, adjusted four times a year was what I felt like I could actually afford. Now that wasn't my priority, that was based on my income at the time. I meet people on a regular basis today that tell me they can't afford chiropractic care at all. And we have $800 cell phones, and we have $30,000 cars. And when I lived on $800 a month, you know, gas was under a dollar a gallon. And, you know, I understand times change, but so, so have priorities. And your phone can't be more important than your body, your brain being able to get your body parts, things working on you, and literally not having your brain get to your body for 20 to 30 years. So the majority of my patients I see are in their 40s and 50s who have never been adjusted before, which means that they've had perpetual crookedness in between the brain and getting to all the body parts. Now why, why is that important? Because it is expensive to be crooked, to put on miles, to be 50 years old and have been crooked the entire time because you can't go backwards. You can't go back to your 20s and be lined up and relive the last 30 years. You've programmed your cells three times over to be in a crooked position. And then I'm sitting in front of the, the patient and I'm 
I don't, I don't want to give him the worst news ever. You're crooked forever. <laughs> um, I sit down and go, okay, so are you, are you drinking water? Or are you sleeping at night? Are you taking care of yourself? Do you eat nutrition? Are you going to come in here? Are you going to work on your posture? Are you going to throw away your chair? You know, ha get a steaming desk. Do the things you need to do to get well, get better. And to be honest with you, 80% of people say no. Honestly, I'm not going to do those things. And I don't understand why to do those things. And eh, forget chiropractic. I'll just do some exercise and see if that gets rid of the pain. This is very expensive. So let's say that person takes three ibuprofen a day. Well, who cares? Well, I do. Let's say that's four bottles a year, right? At $12.99. Right? So $50 a year. Now you hurt your liver, okay? Now people don't do liver cleanses either after putting a lot of stress on their liver with the pills and the sweeteners and the pollutions and whatever's going on in your life. So now you add um, liver trouble later. And what is that worth? What does that cost? Well, a lot of people say it doesn't cost me anything. My insurance covers it. Well, it does. And your insurance covers only so much care, and that care isn't going to regenerate your liver. It might get you a replacement if you're lucky. But there's a lot of people that die from liver complications. So even if your insurance covers, you know, somebody trying to symptomatically get the liver to calm down 20 years from now, the liver would have been a little more prepped if 20 years ago you weren't pumping it full of poison. Right? So having bone pain and taking medicine for that to eventually triple your injury later is expensive it costs you days and months and years of the quality of your life okay so I actually recommend people who think that they don't have a budget or can afford health care I tell them go to hospice care go to manor care and, and just look at what it, it costs for someone to take care of you later when things all break down and then sit down and think about what did you skip out on in life did you not feel well so you missed work? Did you lose a job opportunity? Could you not move where you wanted to move? Could you not follow up on your dreams because you didn't have the strength to follow through? Did you lose a car? Did you lose a friend? Did you lose a marriage? Uh, people's physical inabilities are stopping them from doing the things that they love in life. And then what does that cost you? And you start adding all that up. Like, really. Get a piece of paper and a pen and start really adding up the ibuprofen and the braces and the surgeries and the copays and the insurance payments. And even if your employer pays for this out of their own pocket, that's still coming out of your benefit package at work. And there's a cost to your employer that could be giving you another benefit. And on and on and on. And, and sit down and really think about what that costs you because I don't know a single person on this planet that can afford chiropractic care, naturopathic care, alternative health care. It, it really is affordable considering what it does for you in the long term, not in the immediate, this immediate second. <clears throat> so when I sit down and I discuss this with patients, I, I tell them the story about one of the patients I severely respected. I had a guy who came in to me and told me, I have numbness in my hand, I don't have any health insurance, I don't even have a home, I live out of my car. And I wanna know, the, what do I need to do to get this better? And I told him, well, minimum I need to see you once a week with a bunch of homework. Like I'm gonna give you an hour or so of rehabilitation exercises that you can do on your own that will be very cost effective for you. And he did it, and he got better. And he came in once a week, and he didn't miss an appointment, he fixed the numbness in his hand. He didn't need surgery. Didn't pay health insurance monthly, copay, deductible, co-insurance, surprise insurance. Because the patient that can't afford health care and has the insurance program and goes to the insurance billing and then the insurance doesn't pay and they end up getting frustrated and just quitting care, they're the ones that end up with surgery and the big bill and without the results. It, it, it's pretty profound. That system doesn't work anymore. Being early, being ahead, getting getting the care you need, finding, making it a priority, uh, that's really efficient. Actually, it's very cost effective. 
patients that wait and are in serious pain end up seeing me daily, that, that is expensive. And I benefit financially from that, but I don't benefit in my long range vision. And what does that mean? Well, the majority of my practice is a wellness practice. A lot of my patients are early. And they come in and they feel great and we celebrate all the hard work we've done and, and everything they've been up to with their body and going on long trips and working in the yard and playing with the kids and doing all this fun stuff that they wanted to do and it's amazing. We have a great time and then I have that one person that comes in and they're miserable and they hate being in there and they're so frustrated and, and that's expensive. It's expensive to be that stressed out and it's expensive and it's not fun and I would rather see that person less and then send me more folks to do checkups because then everybody wins. I'd much rather be paid in referrals and see people less feeling better. You know, getting people brushing their spines, like brushing their teeth, not just ignoring their spines because they can't see it because they can see their teeth. You know, that's the big difference between out of sight, out of mind and, and just problems right in front of your face. So. Everyone can afford care. It's whether or not it's a priority. And I'm, I hope that I convinced you to make yourself a priority. And I want you to have a high quality life and I want you to get out there and I don't want you to quit doing your things. I want you to go out and do what you love to do. And it's amazing and there's no reason why not to because when you're lined up and you're strong and you're doing checkups and you're eating good and you're feeling good and you're not stressed out, life is good. But if you don't do what you love and you're not eating good and you're working overtime and then you missed work and then you you didn't sleep because of it and that is downhill spiral and it's really hard to come back from that hope that was helpful any questions please reach out to Kara Cairo thank you